All right, welcome to part two of our stock market prediction series where we are going to actually be doing the bulk of the work and really starting to get into stuff that's interesting where we're going to build and train our model using TensorFlow. Uh, now for this we're going to use uh, the TensorFlow estimator and what that is that's basically like an out-of-the-box neural network but it happens to work really well. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. So let's get started. All right. So first thing we want to do is I've created a new Python file called train model. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our, add our import statements. So we're going to import TensorFlow as TF. Uh, we need to import NumPy, of course. Import NumPy as MP. And we're going to import pandas. That's to import our data file and work with our data. Um, PD and, oh yeah, from SK learn. Um, Oh, sorry, SK learn dot model selection. There we go. Import train test split. That's so we can split up our training data into training data and we can set aside a portion of it for testing our model after we train it. That's what we're going to use that for. Um, okay, that's good for now. Now, first thing we're going to need to do is let's load our let's load our data, right? And we're going to use pandas for that. Um, so let's set, let's create a variable here, data file f equals, and we're just going to put our file name in there. So it's market data hist two year dot CSV. We don't need the path because it's in the same path as the script. Um, and then let's load it. So we'll, we'll, we'll call this uh, market data, oops market underscore data equals pd dot read csv and data file path okay that's going to load our csv pandas makes it really easy to load a csv file it's really it's really a, a pretty good library um, so that's it that's simple that's simply load that that one statement will load our csv file into this market data uh, parameter variable um, okay Next thing we want to do is let's create a list with our uh, field names, with our like our field headers, basically. Um, you'll, you'll see why we use that later. So field names equals. Um, so we're going to it's percent change, All right? So for this model, all we're using is the percent changes. Um, of the stock. That's all. That's that's pretty much. That's the only thing we're using to train this model. It's just we're just tracking the percent changes over time. So percent change one. That's the most recent percent change. Percent change two. That's the day before that. Percent change three is the day before that. Remember, it's a rolling 14 days. Um, but these anyway. These are our header columns. So percent. Actually, let's just do this. Cut and paste this. Actually, I think I. Have this I already typed this out somewhere. Save time. So let's just copy and paste that in. Where is that? La la la. I did a few things to save us some time. Okay. There we go. And then we have percentage one, one through fourteen. And then our final column Y, that's our zero or one that we're gonna be trying to predict. Okay. Now normally at this part I would uh, normalize our values. Um, normalization will bring them all down to the same scale, but because we're using percent change, I, I should still do it probably, but because we're using percent change, normalization, the type of normalization that's normally done will, will compress all the values between a value of zero and one, right? So they're all on the same scale, but because all of our variables are the same, they're all percent change, they're all already on the same scale pretty much, and they'll all be close to one, two, three, right? How much does the stock move in a day, right? One to five percent maybe at most. Right, usually one, two, three, if that, not even that sometimes, right? So I don't think it's as important, but we should probably still do it, but I'm gonna skip it for now. Um, so let's, let's just, so we can just move on. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to create our feature columns. These these are going to be our TensorFlow, our TensorFlow columns, right? So normally if you had, now models can have thousands of features, right? thousands of columns. That's not uncommon, especially if you're working with image data. But in this case, so normally I would I would put those in a list and write a for loop to do that, right? 
and just give them use like an index to 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 name them like percent change one two three right to do that in a foil. But here I'm just gonna we'll just type them out. It's not that many. We don't have that many features. Um, so we'll go feature call percent one equals tf dot feature column. And it's going to be numeric, numeric column, and then we'll give it the name, right? This is going to be percent change one, right? And then we'll do that for one to 14, right? It'd be all the columns that we specified in our field names up here. So let's go ahead and do that, right? Percent change two, oops. And then, right, three, four, three. So I'll just go ahead and do this. Um, go five, six, seven, eight. Probably, yeah, I could have done this in a loop, but it's fine. Nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, and 14. And we could delete these last two. There we go. Okay. Let me just finish this. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, great. Now we have our feature columns. This is going to be used in our TensorFlow uh, model. Okay. Um, now what I do is, let's throw these in, feature, calls, we'll throw these inside a list here, two, I'll go three, Oops. Actually, let's see. There we go. Four, five, six. Should probably type this out ahead of time, too. <laughs> All right. Then we'll go seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, and one more, 14. Okay, great. All right, now, next thing we want to do is we want to create our train and test split, right? We've loaded our market data, right? Now we want to create, we want to separate that, right? We want to use a certain portion of that, the majority of it, to train our model. And then we want to make sure we set aside a part of it to test our model, to see how good it is, All right? So that's what we're going to do here. Um, but the first thing we're, 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 but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to split our data into our feature data and our label data, right? That Y column. So we're going to, we're going to sp split those out, okay? Because we want to keep those separate. So. We'll call it, typically your feature columns are called X, right? So we'll call X data equals market data. And look how easy this is with, um, with pandas. Dot drop Y and X this is one. That's how simple it is. So this will return all of our data except the last column. So that'll be our feature data. And then if we want our Y data, we want the last column now. We want to separate that. So we'll go market data um, Y. That's how easy that is. Now that splits out our Y data. That was very simple. Now let's create, now let's actually do the work. Let's create our train and test split. Um, so that's going to get return. We're going to use that um, import statement up here. We're going to use this function, train test split. Uh, that's going to return X train x test train data test data y train y test okay that's going to equal train test split 
okay? And we're going to pass it our x data and y data separately like we, that we just created. x data, y data, and then our test size, right? How much do we want to reserve for testing, right? 20%, 10%, 5%, what? Right? So we're going to use 20%. That's pretty kind of standard, but doesn't, you know, you could use whatever, whatever makes sense based on the size, how much data you have. Um, and then we can give it a random state. That, that just makes, makes sure that um, it's the same every time, kind of. Uh, but we don't need to, that, that's not important, to be honest. All right. Now, now's when we're going to use, um, we're going to create our input function, it's called. Um, and this, this is going to be used in the TensorFlow estimator. So this is this is a this is a pretty important step. And this is where we tell it how we, we kind of give it some configuration parameters. So let, let's go ahead and do that, and we'll, I'll kind of explain as we go. So we'll call this input function equals. This is going to be the input function to our model, right? That we're going to pass to our estimator. But it'll make sense later. We'll, let's let's just go ahead and do it. So tf dot estimator estimator yep dot inputs dot pandas input function. Now, this is where we pass it our data, right? X train Y train. Again, this is going to be used to train our model, so we want to make sure we pass it the training data we just separated. Okay. Um, now, batch size. We'll go with 10. Um, what, what, what does batch size mean? So, when you train a model, it's gonna. This is gonna do it in batches, right? It's gonna take um, basically a set of ten records, right? It's gonna train the model on it. It's gonna update the weights, and then it's gonna take another set of ten and update the weights, and take another set of ten and update the weights, right? It's called um, basically batch training, right? There's other ways to do it. You can you can train it on the entire data set and then update the weights, right? That's kind of, I guess, an older way of doing it. I guess you could say. Um, so again, it's you know that that's what that is, right? That's how that that's all that's saying. All right, and you could play with that. Um, you could use different batch sizes. That's something that you can kind of tweak and and, and play with. Um, okay. Next thing is the number of epochs. What is this? This is how many times. Remember, so we're we're gonna do this each time. It processes ten records. It's gonna update our weights, tweak our weights, right? To try to get closer, to try to get, to try to improve, right? But it's going to do that for the entire data set, right? So it's going to do it in bat. It's going to do the go through the entire data set. So if there's 200 records in your data set, it's going to do them in batches of 10, the entire data set. But once it gets through all 200 records, that's one epoch. Okay. So how many times do you want to process your entire data set? Um, so again, this is something that gets tweaked. So we can do, I don't know, a thousand. Well, let's just do 100 for now. Um, okay, shuffle. We're going to go shuffle equals true, right? So what does shuffle mean? Shuffle means do you want to rearrange your data? Do you want to shuffle the data, right? Because if it's in a certain order, you may not want that, right? You don't want to process it in a certain order. You want to make it, you may want to shuffle it and make it random, right? Um, so we'll say shuffle equals true. That's 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 what that means. Um, okay, now let's create our model and then model. Our neural network model equals um, tf dot s tor um, dot. We're using a dense neural network classifier, right? So what is that classifier? Uh, remember, we're trying to predict values of zero or one, right? That's what we set y to. One if the stock went up one percent or more. Zero if it didn't. Um, so that's classification, right? There's only two values, right? There's two two classes. It's either yes or no, right? So that's dense neural network classifier. Um, okay. Now this is where we specify our neurons, right? So hidden units, oops, equals. Okay, make that like a list. So we'll start out with, um, I don't know. We'll go three layers, 15, 15, 15. And we'll start, start with that. Um, again, something that you can tweak. Now, remember that's going to be. Remember, if you draw, if you look at a neural network like the the classic drawings of the little circles, the neurons, and then the layers, they're each in, in a line, right? 
That's what this is, right? So this is going to be 15 neurons, three layers deep of three layers of 15 neurons. Um, yeah. Now feature columns. This is where we passed it, our feature column. Oops. Feature columns. There we go. And this is where we pass it, our feature calls that we created up here. Okay, great. Um... And we need one more, and it's and classes. How many classes are in your classifier, right? We have two, yes or no. Pass that a two. Um, but if you were doing like image classification and you wanted to classify between, I don't know, cats and dogs, horses, and I don't know, trains or something like that, right? You'd have four there, right? Depends, that's all that is. Okay, so. Now, and, th and this estimator makes it really, you, you can see how easy this is. This makes it super easy to create, to create a model. I mean, we're almost there, basically, right? And that, that, that was, this was very quick, very, very simple. And it works really well, like I said. Um, now, I did create a model from scratch using raw TensorFlow for this, and it actually didn't work as well. Um, okay, so now, model.train. Now we want to train our model. Okay, and we pass it our input function equals input function, right? That's the input function that we created right here and where we passed it our training data and all that. And our batch size, it's that line right there. We pass that to, to our train function. And then steps. We'll just do 100. Okay, now. Uh, the last thing I want to do, so let's, let's kind of, let's, let's, let's comment this, right? So this is create train test split. This is create and train model. And then now, next thing we're going to do is evaluate the model, right? How good is it? Evaluate model. So for here, we need to create oops, an eval input function equals tf tensorflow dot estimator dot inputs dot again pandas input function right. Only this time we're going to pass it our test data. So we're going to do um, x equals x underscore test y equals y test batch size again we'll use 10 num epox 1 All right, we're just going to evaluate it once um, and then shuffle right because it's limited data okay great so now oh so now let's do results what are the results equals and then model dot evaluate and then we pass it our eval input function okay great so now we're going to evaluate now let's now what we want to do is we want to print our results right we want to, we want to see it on the screen here so we'll go we'll create some print statements and we'll just call this model results. And so we can just do results. Actually, put it at the line below. Results. There we go. Great. OK. So now we should be able to run this. And see what we get. So let's give it a shot. Hopefully nothing fails. I think we got everything. <laughs> All right. Looks like it's running. Hasn't failed yet. That's a good sign. Let's make this a little bigger. So it 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 it'll take a little bit uh, to get going. 
uh, but it does run fairly quickly. All right, there we go. Now, there, don't get scared. I, I hate that this is red text. It's actually just, it's, it doesn't mean it failed. All right, there we go. So here we go, it finished. All right, that was pretty quick. And here's our results. So here's our loss, right? This is our total error. Um, cost, precision recall. So we should maybe go through these, but here's what the, the, the one that we're looking for here. Accuracy. So 67%. So that means it was able, it was correct 67% of the time um, when it guessed at our 0, 1 column. So now typically, so all right, so now we have our model, we've trained our model, um, we know about how accurate it is. Um, so at this point, what I would do is I would go ahead and start tweaking this to try to see if I can get the accuracy up. 67%, um, not, not a great, not great, it's, it's really not good. Um, but you have to keep in mind this is stock market data, so you're not going to get 98%. There's just there's no way. Um, but I like I like to see. I, I believe the model that I actually used was it was in the high 70s or mid 70s, something like that, um, which is which I thought was pretty good. And, and I, like I said, I did use it with some success to be to be to be perfectly honest. Um, so yeah, so this is so that's it. That's that's what that's what the model. And like I said, the estimator you guys you can see is pretty simple to use and it, and, it, and it works pretty well. Um, so yeah, so all right. In the next video, we're going to now that we've created our training data, right? That was the first video. We've created our model, trained our model, um, evaluated our model. Now the next video, we're going to actually use our model, right? Uh, and that part's called inference, right? So we, we, and what we're going to do is we're going to capture the daily market data and we're going to use this model to make predictions. So that's coming up next. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.